So what we want to do in this case is, um, as you can see, that this equation is in uh, standard form, right? ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, you do understand how to find the axis symmetry, plug that point in, and find the vertex, right? So it's very basic. Um, however, uh, sometimes for not only finding the zeros, um, but for finding the vertex, obviously finding the vertex when it's in vertex form is much simpler, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. So one of the processes we can do is we can convert it from standard form to vertex form. Minus k squared. What the heck am I doing? Minus h. OK? So that's basically the process that we're going to be doing, is converting it from standard form to vertex form. All right? So to go ahead and do that, what we need to do is we need to rewrite this as a trinomial. You can see this is a binomial squared. Mm -hmm. The relationship between a binomial and a, tri or a trinomial and a binomial squared is we can always um, think about this. y equals x squared plus 4x plus 4. When we factor this, this is what we call a perfect square trinomial. This is a binomial squared. Now think about this. So when I'm looking at this, I can factor this to x plus 2 squared because y equals x plus 2 times x plus 2, which is x plus 2 squared, right? Mm -hmm. Now notice, when I FOIL this, I get x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4, which is x squared plus 4x plus 4, OK? So the product of a binomial squared is a perfect square trinomial. So what we have is we have a trinomial, but this is not a perfect square trinomial. So what we need to do is we need to create a perfect square trinomial. That's what we're doing. We are creating a perfect square trinomial that we can factor to a binomial squared. Because once we have a binomial squared, then we have it in vertex form. So first thing we need to do is make sure our coefficient of our x squared is equal to 1. Okay? If it's not, then we factor it out. But this case, we do have it. The next case is now we need to create a value that's going to make this a perfect square. 6 does not make this a perfect square. So to find the value that's going to make this a perfect square, what we do is we take b divided by 2 and square it. So b in this case is negative 4. So negative 4 divided by 2 and squared. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is equal to 4. Okay. So now we take that value and we're going to add 4 inside and outside. So we're going to say y equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. Now, I'm going to put that in parentheses, because mm -hmm. now what that does is that value c creates a perfect square trinomial that I can factor. Then, but remember, this is an equation. So whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other side, right? Mm -hmm. But since we're just converting it to vertex form, we're not solving, I am going to keep that on the same side. So if I add 4, I can subtract 4, and then plus 6. All right. Now we need to factor this. Now remember, I showed you the example x squared plus 4, x plus 4. That factored down to x plus 2 squared. What do you think this would factor down to if you were to factor this? You practice factoring by now. It's a perfect square trinomial. So it's going to be y equals x plus or minus what number by itself? Um, negative 2. Yeah, very good. Negative 2. Then negative 4 plus 6 is? Positive 2. And there you go. We have now converted it from standard form to vertex form. Where now you can say the vertex is 2 comma 2. Axis symmetry is x equals 2. Right? The graph opens up. You can say the range is from 2 to infinity. And you can do a whole bunch of things from there. All right? Does that make sense? Kind of? Not something else? Cool. Oh, I did have it in there. Sweet. OK.